Hi, my name is Kevin. Um, I'm the only team member of the team Kevin and I'm from Singapore and I don't really have any relevant previous experience in robotics. So today I'll be talking a bit about the Coast Space Rescue Competition um, and my experience of being within the First Steps and Under-19 Division. Uh, specifically, I'll go through analysis, my AI algorithms and resources, my implementation, debugging, conclusion, and learning experience through this competition. So as an analysis, um, when the map first got released in prelims, I looked over the map and I found that it would be effective to sort of break down the problem into many tasks. So I broke that down into square targeting, depositing, and collecting RRCCBB sets. So when I first analyzed the map, I found that the walls at the bottom of the map, um, so these two walls here, made it quite difficult to transition between bottom squares and other squares. And as a result, um, I built it into the strategy where if the robot is at a bottom square, then it would first go up vertically one square in order to avoid the walls. I also found that the deposit at the top right corner uh, was quite difficult because there was a risk of the trap and I didn't want to uh, uh, I didn't want to risk losing all of the collected objects because of that trap. Um, I also had to make certain turning as well as speed adjustments throughout the map, uh, especially when the robot was in close proximity to a trap in a certain square. So for example, here I may have to slow down. And finally, um, routing in general throughout the mission was quite important um, in order to maximize use of the top left uh, deposit as we'll see here in the video. So as an example of this process, this is a short snippet of the run, of, of one of the runs I did during the preliminaries. So the robot first of all starts um, trying to look for at least one cyan object in the cyan spawn at 1 comma 1. It then looks for at least one red object in the square directly below it. Following this, it goes to the black spawn and looks for, again, at least one black object. In this case, it got lucky and so it collected two. And so following this, it'll go immediately to the random spawn in the square above it and look for at least one square of any color. So after a while searching, um, the object that it found was the sign object, and it also found the red object. So both of the missing um, two colors from the RCC BB set was found, and so it immediately goes to deposit. So in terms of my actual algorithms, um, firstly, my main uh, algorithm was the idea of using differential steering, which is where I plugged in both the speed and the turn rate of the robot into a function. So the function, therefore, can control both the robot's turning and movement speed. And uh, as a result of such a function, I can avoid sort of the jerky movements that is provided by the alternative, which is the case-based movement. Um, because the function in this case can really accept any range of speeds and any range of turning motions. Um, the robot is also able to intelligently detect colors um, of corresponding treasures by not only detecting for RGB on both sensors, but also I built in a range of RGB values. So this is important because occasionally the sensor doesn't land directly over the treasure, but sometimes instead on the, on the edge of the treasure because of uh, the speed of the robot being maximized. Um, to have wall avoidance built into the robot's movement, um, I also created a wall avoidance function. So rather than only using the front sensor, the function depends on all three by taking the minimum value amongst them and that finds whichever uh, whichever sensor is closest to a wall. And this is important because sometimes the front sensor isn't always able to accurately detect when there is, for example, an edge on the side of the robot, which can also cause unwanted collisions. 
So using all three, um, it allows the robot to also be able to turn away from, uh, turn towards the, the area with more space to avoid um, crashing into walls. Another important part was targeted movement. So with the coordinate system on the map um, and a compass that was built in, a target square rotation function was also built. And I used that to orient the robot's movement towards um, key locations. So this was important in my routing strategy, for example, uh, as I built in, for, for example, where the target deposit location was. So with steering and movement for both target square and wall avoidance, um, a weighted average is taken between the two to combine both. So this allows the robot to better move towards the target location when it's far away from walls and there's a low chance of collision. But when it's close to walls and there's a high chance of collision, then it prioritizes the wall avoidance compared to the um, targeted movement. And finally, with regards to traps and depositing, so the robot only deposits when there's a maximum of full, when, when there's full, six treasures fully stored, um, unless there's, uh, unless the end game is, is coming soon and there's only 20 seconds left. And um, that in maximizes efficiency because it avoids the three second deposit time. And to avoid traps, the robot simply turns away with maximum speed when it detects the edge of the trap. Um, in terms of the resources I used, I simply used VS Code as well as GCC, which is the compiler. And um, this offered many advantages, like the fact that it's um, more flexible compared to the GUI, since I can use math. So in terms of overall strategy and implementation, um, I start at the spawn area, and I immediately go to 1,1 until at least one sign object is collected. I go to one comma zero after that and stay until one red is collected. I then go to two comma zero um, while avoiding the wall and the trap and I stay there until one black object is collected. I then go to two comma one to collect the random object and then I go to whichever spawn has a remaining missing object collected. And then finally I go to the top left deposit and I deposit. So this entire process is repeated but um, when there's 20 seconds left in the game, then I immediately go to the top left deposit and I deposit whatever I have in the robot. So in terms of debugging, um, throughout the programming process, I used uh, mainly prints as well as line by line tests and prints were advantageous because they allowed me to understand exactly the output of a certain function, for example. And the line by line tests were very important because the, so the, the algorithm ended up becoming quite long. So by testing line by line, it allows me to find precisely where the error existed. So in conclusion, I was quite satisfied with the results. Um, however, there were some optimizations I think could still be made. For example, the robot sometimes spends quite long in the black square for black treasures, and that's because um, they do get depleted fairly quickly. And so I could consider using the randomized square above it more efficiently and more often to avoid that issue of depleting squares. And um, just as a general improvement, I think that I could further think about optimizations to pathing, um, although I don't have a concrete plan for that just yet. In terms of my learn learning experience overall, um, I learned how to program in C, which is a new program programming language for me. Uh, I learned many valuable debugging techniques, such as um, how to effectively use prints. Um, there are several types of files um, and updating processes uh, that are new to me. For example, I didn't know at all what a DLL file was before. And more importantly, I, I gained exposure to a new operating system because normally I'm on Mac. And finally, I learned to um, have clear communication that goes beyond programming, such as, for example, being able to use slide presentations and video screencasts to communicate my ideas more efficiently and clearly. Yeah, this has been a great experience and thank you.